are coming to you from Comerica Park in Detroit, where tonight. Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox baseball. It's Todd Frazier, Brett Laurie, Jose Abreu in the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Miguel Cabrera, Victor Martinez, Ian Kinsler, and the Detroit Tigers. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you the first of this three-game set. And what will be the seventh is what's turned into a nine-game road trip. As you know, we're coming out of New York. We had an off day yesterday. But we won two out of three there. We lost the first game one nothing, one game two six four, and then in 13 innings, a very exciting Matt Albers, and we won that game two to one. But tonight, we're going to be facing a real stud right-handed lineup. There's no doubt that these guys can hit the ball. In fact, against right-handed pitching, they've done a lot better. But it's Carlos Rodon going to the mound, and he's got to deal with these guys from the right side. Victor Martinez, who's a switch hitter, but normally much better right-handed. Ian Kinsler, who's been terrific this year, and. He's really tough at the top and then the guy that just terrorizes everybody Miguel Cabrera. So these three right handed hitters are usually awfully good and the numbers bear it out as you can see 337 317 310 you look at the home runs the runs driven in Ian Kinsler 44 scored runs it's almost unbelievable but this team hitting from the right side you can see they're awfully good. That again is mostly against right handed pitchers sixth in batting average first in hits home runs their second runs batted in their second. So this is a team that can wear you out especially in this ballpark that the Tigers are struggling and hopefully they continue to struggle. All right we got a youngster out there for us and a veteran for them tonight. We've got Carlos Rodon going to the mound for us and last time out against Kansas City he threw the ball very well. So we'll take a look at some of his offerings. That's a pretty good Kansas City ball club and unfortunately we were swept in that series but Carlos threw it very well. And Jordan Zimmerman who they spent one hundred and ten million dollars on is just getting back off the disabled list. He had a groin problem nothing wrong with his arm and he's seven and two this year and he's awfully tough. He moves the ball in and out. He's not overwhelming but he does have terrific stuff. So the last time out for Rodon. Well he was pretty good. You can see against the ALC which is the American League Central Jordan Zimmerman has been unbeatable 7 0 ERA 280 and this is a guy that is just a bulldog and he's a great addition to this team. That's one of the reasons why they brought him in but they haven't addressed the bullpen problem and hopefully they continue to struggle there. All right. Well our guys are 73 and 73 all time here at Comerica Park. So sit back relax and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Sox Baseball on CSN Chicago is brought to you in part by Toyota. Discover more in a Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com or your local Toyota dealer today. Let's go places. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. And by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Back to Comerica Park in Detroit. It's an absolutely gorgeous evening for baseball as our Sox take on the Detroit Tigers. And let's take a look how Robin is going to line them up tonight. It's kind of a depleted lineup with Adam Eaton leading it off. Tyler Saladino in the two spot. Todd Frazier hitting in the third spot. Then Jose Abreu clean up. J.B. Shuck in center. Austin Jackson still has had a foot problem. Brett Laurie, who over the last six has been doing great. Then it's Jimmy Rollins, Avisio Garcia, and Alex Avila, both against their former club. The defense, and now Brad Osmus is going to line them up behind Jordan Zimmerman. It's Justin Upton, Cameron Maben, and J.D. Martinez in right field. Mike Avilas, the old Sox killer, along with Jose Iglesias. Then we have Ian Kinsler and Miguel Cabrera at first, with James McCann getting the nod behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Jordan Zimmerman on for his 10th start. He hasn't pitched in a couple of weeks. He's coming off the disabled list. He had a groin problem, but he's 7 and 2, his ERA 2 and a half. He came from the Washington Nationals as a free agent, the first free agent in history to have Tommy John surgery and then sign a hundred plus million dollar contract. Take it with the umpires for the game tonight. John Tumpain is behind the plate. Alan Porter at first. Paul Nart is at second. And the crew chief, Jack Kellogg, is at third. So they'll throw the ball around the infield. We've had a couple of gorgeous days in Detroit. And we're ready to play baseball. And that means that I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Steve. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone. And welcome to White Sox Baseball right here over Comcast Sportsnet. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. Adam Eaton. First pitch off the plate. And indeed, it is just a lovely, lovely evening here in the Motor City. And that's how to play left side. Jordan. And at the ballpark, 345 down the left field line, 330 down the right field line, 365 out there in right center, 370 out there in left center, and 420 dead away center field. Tigers don't know what to expect from Zimmerman because he hasn't been out there in a couple of weeks. He's 6 2. He's 2 and a quarter. Last year at Washington, 13 and 10 in 33 starts. He's for the most part a two pitch pitcher. He's got a fastball. He's got pinpoint control normally with that, and he has a slider, and it's a good one. He'll change speeds occasionally with that slider, and they thought they were getting the missing piece when they got him for their starting rotation. That's high and deep into right center field. And J.D. Martinez is there. So with one out. Let's check out our picks to click. Jim Angio. John Walgren. Dave Ross and the crew. Well they're going to go with. J.B. Shuck. Steve's going with Adam Eaton. David Novak and all the great folks that. Pui Hyundai and Downers Grove and I we're going to go with Todd Frazier by request. Well Todd Frazier I talked with him before the game and he said look he's not hitting a lot but as long as he keeps hitting home runs he's feeling OK about it. I think the Sox are feeling OK about it too. When you factor in that defense and what he means to this team in the locker room in the dugout. Tyler. Very quickly to count nothing in two. Well, we touched on it the other day. Batting average is the most overrated thing in baseball. Well, you can get on, but if you don't have speed and you can't score, you've got somewhat of a problem. Is that one? Buzzes them high and tight. Just kind of a calling card here with the 0 2 count. Now and around it. Iglesias. Two down. 
Talk to Omar Vizquel, the former, well, former just about a lot of things. Uh, Omar, a wonderful man and a great player and will manage one day. There's a look at him. He was talking about Iglesias at shortstop, and I asked him what he's trying to get him to do. Well, right there, he's positioning him. He wants him more up the middle than he does in the hole. But he's saying, look, his natural tendency is to be as flashy as he possibly can. He's trying to get him to eliminate as much of the flash as possible without taking away what has been him since he came into the league. Well, that's the problem. Yep. That's let's, let's just put it where it's at. Latin players grow up learning a different kind of baseball than American players. It's just that simple. Yeah, they do that. And it doesn't it doesn't mean one thing is right and one thing is wrong. It's just the way it's been. It's, it's a different game they grow up in. But Iglesias is not among the league leaders in uh, the defensive indexes because although he's got good hands there's some some balls that get through that look like they probably shouldn't. He's still good and he came over in that three way deal where Jake Peavy went to Boston. Abasil Garcia came to our ball club. Iglesias went to theirs. He did not go. So the count one and two to Frazier. 220, 17 homers, 38 driven in. Any doubt in your mind that Omar Vizquel is going to manage one day? No. Pretty smart player, huh? He was one of the smartest. It's hard to. It's hard in my career. You can't come up with a better than Vizquel and Robbie Alomar. No, they, that combination. No, that, that was that was state of the art. That was as good as it got. Yeah. No, and there are going to be a lot of Latin managers coming into this into this game. That's the way the game is evolved. It, the guy that mystifies me that as he gets him, so that's a one, two, three inning, and after half inning of play, our guys nothing, and the Tigers, well, they're coming to bat. And let's take a look at how the Tigers are going to line them up. Ian Kinsler at the top, then it's Cameron Maben, Miguel Cabrera, Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, Justin Upton, Mike Avilas, James McCann, and Jose Iglesias sitting in the nice spot playing shortstop. The defense, to now Robin is going to line them up. Javi Garcia in left, J.B. Shuck in center, Adam Eaton in right, and then it's Fraser, Saladino, Laurie, and Abreu in the infield. Alex Avila behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Carlos Rodon looking for win number three. Now one name missing Melky Cabrera is out of the lineup. He's gone on a family emergency leave. He'll be gone for three days and that will leave things a bit short for Robin when he's looking for moves off the bench. That's the reason Garcia and Chuck playing in the same outfield with Austin Jackson nursing that foot injury still. 
And here is Kensler takes first pitch strike. Having a big year for him. 317, 11 homers, 30 knocked in, scored a ton. He's just a good player, has been a good player. One of the better fastball hitters in all of baseball. And calmed it down just a bit, but he's still one of the most aggressive hitters in yeah. baseball. I mean, you just saw him take two pitches, which you probably won't see the rest of the night. The first two pitches of the at bat, unless they're over his head or in the dirt. And that is just foul. Just foul. Kinsler's been good for a long time, and they got him from Texas. And it was an interesting deal because the principal, Prince Fielder, went to Texas. It opened the first base position. Miguel Cabrera slid over to first base, which is why they wanted to trade Prince. They got Kinsler in return. It helped out both ball clubs, and Kinsler's, Kinsler's been terrific for Detroit. Two two. That time swung the bat fell out of his hands. Kinsler's one of the few guys in this lineup and that's one of the reasons why the Tigers have had some problems. He's one of the few guys who can run. See him follow it off and the bat. Departs his grip. Seven out of nine and stolen bases this entire. Detroit team has swiped 17 bases so they are deceptively slow. <laughs> Here you go. Deceptively slow. Yeah, I mean, you have some guys who you think can run, and then at the end, they really can't. And that's a good way to start it off, keeping their premier base stealer off base. And that was a backdoor, a backdoor slider. And he got it by Kinsler. So here's Maven, Cameron Maven. Last year with Atlanta, hit 267, 10 homers, and drove in 59. Former number one pick of these Tigers. Maven has had a number of opportunities in a number of different places and just has not put it together yet. Off to a very good start here in Detroit. Takes first pitch. 0 and 1 to count. They had a center fielder from Toronto who could really go get him, Anthony Ghost. But he didn't endear himself to the ball club. They sent him down. He has three days to report. And he showed up the next day in the locker room in duck hunting attire. Taking the full three days to go down the minor leagues, but he was going to go out and hunt some ducks. In the meantime, it doesn't make the ball club real happy. Big gap out there in left center. Well, he's not going to do anything with that pitch. No good hard slider. That was the back foot slider, low and in, and maybe despite hitting over 400, he's not hitting him on good hard sliders, low and in. That's what's going to make Carlos Rodon an exceptional pitcher. Well, that's why right-handed hitters, the smart ones. Which is a very small percentile. We'll learn to back off the plate on that slider. That's exactly what Keith Hernandez told us from the left side why he backed off the plate against right hand pitchers. That's exactly right. I mean if you if you want to take that slider away. Back off the plate because anything you see inside is going to be a ball and then just look away. Seems like an easy concept. Well the ball boils down to beating them arm side. If you're a right handed hitter you want to beat left handers to right field. You're a Right hand hitter, you want to be right handers to left field. And you can force some of the action by positioning in the plate, in the batter's box. Cabrera hitting at 310, 12 homers, 32 knocked in. This man's hit 420 home runs. He's a 321 lifetime hitter. Last year hit 338, 18 homers, and drove in 76. So the last 17 home games, geez, it almost looks like he's getting the signs. I'm sure that he's not because that would be against the rules, but hitting 500 over 17 games, that's pretty good. The oddity about the Tigers, by the way, is that they hit 
left handers pretty well they just don't beat them they have the worst record in the major leagues against left hand pitchers. And that's ball four. The all those numbers that I read you right there about Miguel Cabrera are very good but still in my opinion not anywhere near where they should be. Oh he's had he's had a lot of leg injuries and so I'm talking and, about yeah. the injuries yeah. if, if he had stayed healthy he had a chance to be as good a hitter as we've ever seen. No he's going to get healthier and most likely he's going to get those numbers back up to where they should be and later on in the game I'm going to tell you a pretty good synopsis by Wally Joyner their hitting coach as pertains to Miguel Cabrera. He was one of the leaders of the ball club, Victor Martinez. Hitting a 337, eight homers and 32 driven in. There you see this year, left handed has been much better, especially in the power department. But normally he is just really difficult from the right side. I mean, he can hit from both sides. The one thing that Victor can't do because of all of the leg problems is. He cannot run a lick. So if he's at second and they get a base hit, real tough for him to score. That hits the bag. So now that. Two out walk on third base as Victor moves into second. That's his 13th two bagger. Actually, probably a good thing that it did hit the bag because then it bounded off the stands on the side and bounded right to Avi. If this one gets down the line and rattles around in the corner, there's a very good chance that Cabrera is able to score. But you'll see it hits the sidewall, and then Avi gets it back in. Now you got to be careful with J.D. Martinez. He's a big run producer. Hit 38 homers and drove in 102 last season. Nice play by Alex. J.D. hitting at 244, 11 homers and 30 knocked in this year. And he has faced Carlos three times, has one hit, and that one left the park. Well, you've got Upton in the on deck circle is hitting 215 and has really struggled in the early going. Last two and a half years, one of the one of the better stories in baseball, J.D. Martinez. When I asked Wally Joyner about him, I said, what happened? He said, well, he didn't get along all that well with Bo Porter with Houston at the time, and they gave up on him. He said it was just too, too quick a release. But the big factor, he said, was he completely revamped his swing. He lowered his hands, and he stood up straighter. He said with the hands held high, he couldn't catch up with pitches. Now lowering his hands he said he became a completely different hitter and Houston didn't have the opportunity to see him after the transition but Detroit is ecstatic. They let him go. Now very seldom you'll ever hear a story about a team trying to trade for a guy. In this case, Detroit trying to trade for Martinez with Houston. They turned down that deal, Houston. <laughs> I know. Then they released him. And then Detroit picked him up. Poof, for nothing. For nothing. Yeah. Well, that good hard slider in the dirt, the back foot slider here, if you trust that Alex is going to block it, is probably a very good pitch. That's a good pitch to any right handed hitter anytime, especially with two strikes. They get a fastball right down the middle and fortunately fouled it straight back. 
He's fanned 60 times this year. As you can see, the Honda pitch strikes will show you it is down the middle. 60 strikeouts in less than a third of the season. Upton has 74 in the on deck circle. Gonna be a whole lot of pitches this inning because 25 forthcoming. It's a good two, stop. Two and two the count. Alex did a nice job of making sure that. Cabrera stayed 90 feet away from scoring the first run. Big gap out there in left center. We've seen JD with just big power to right center field, which plays very well in his ballpark. Full count. There's look at Justin Upton. You can throw a two two, you can throw a three two. He did and he gone. Three strikeouts. They strand a pair and after one no score. profile and he belongs to Jordan Zimmerman first season with the Tigers after signing that huge free agent contract 20 over in seven seasons with the Nationals AL pitcher of the month for April only five and zero oh in April and he pitched a no hitter in 2014 against the Marlins and there he is Jordan Zimmerman a big free agent acquisition and He's been pretty good. He's seven and two with a fine ERA. Here's Abreu. Jose trying to figure it out. Softly hit. Very softly hit. Well, that was very close at first base as 
Abreu was hustling down there. It took a little bad hop at the end, but Gensler stayed with it and just barely got him. <laughs> just so soft, he almost didn't get to him at all. Nope. Out by about a half step. So here's Shuck. Chuck. Hitting fifth behind a brave. You know, we were talking about Latin managers though. One one of the things that still mystifies me is that you got you got a lot of clubs. And first of all, as you've heard me say many times, Stephen, private conversation, I'm very, very partial to Latins. I was as a player, there's a base hit. Was as a player and for 40 years as a broadcaster. But it just, you got a lot of clubs out there, got a lot of Latin players, got a lot of talent. They're not doing well. And Ozzy Guillen's still not managing. That's amazing. No, but you'd have to believe that Ozzy will and the man you're looking at, Omar Vizquel, is going to manage. Freddie Gonzalez, who I think was put in an untenable situation in Atlanta and is a good guy and He's a good, good manager. manager. He's going to get another job. Davey Martinez. Yeah, and I think Dave has been in the running for just about every managerial job that's come along, and he's going to get one, the protege of Joe Madden. And I still believe somewhere along the line that Sandy Alomar, who's come in second more times than he would care to admit, Will probably wind up getting a job. He's going to. Yeah. He's going to. There's some very, very smart baseball guys out there. And a lot of people don't realize that two of the most successful managers we've had in a long, long time, Lou Pinella and Tony LaRusso, both were fluent in, Sp in Spanish. One count. James McCann has not hit the ball well, but he's a good receiver. He's got a couple of mechanical flaws, not too many as a catcher, but he can catch it and throw it pretty well. And he came up with an ankle injury in spring training, turned his ankle running to first base, and hasn't been the same as a hitter since. And if you're a catcher, you're putting a lot of a lot of pressure on that ankle and I don't think that's helping him any but we saw him last couple of years he's been a very promising young catcher and now he's pretty much got the job along with Jared Saltalamakia. Well there's a bullet. Boy it's a good thing that was a couple of feet to the left of his head. That one's right down the middle and Brent takes it right back up the middle. So fortunately for Zimmerman it was on the glove side and wasn't right at it. So here's Rollins, Jimmy at 225, a couple of homers, eight knocked in. Zimmerman has tossed seven double plays this year in his 35 opportunities, and that's way above league average. High, high. Foul ground. And caught. Crowd number two. Sox fans come out to specialty beer night on Tuesday, June 28th in the patio area. The $45 ticket package 
includes access to the tasting room from 540 until 730 complimentary food in the patio and an outfield reserve game ticket to purchase visit White Sox .com slash specialty. That'll bring up Ivy. Oh, you had 243, five homers and 18 knocked in. But Zimmerman gets to the wipeout situation. He goes to the slider. And that slider is good enough where he'll have a whole lot of the right hand hitters specifically chasing after it out of the zone. Well, I was talking with Ty about it before the game. That ball hit hard, and that's going to be a base hit. So here comes Chuck. He scores, and it's 1 0 Stocks. Rockets off the bat of Laurie and Garcia. Not much better than doing some damage against the team that traded you away. And that fastball was inner portion, took it right back up the middle. Maven is not the best of center fielders, does not have a great arm, realizing he has no play, but getting it to Iglesias, they just missed getting Laurie at second. It's a good thing they did because that tag was put on before the run scored. And Cabrera came over and gave Avi a big hug. They called Avi little Miggy over here. He looked the same when when he was with the time I mean, he's changed a little now but when he was with the Tigers that batting stance was the same. So here is Avila. But I asked Todd about Zimmerman. He said fastballs a lot of fastballs he likes his fastball and slider and he said pretty good slider which meant he's got a good one. Well there you see fastballs 55 percent of the time is slider 32 percent that is a big number. Changeups vary infrequently. Curveballs, well, that maybe is a bigger slider. He doesn't officially throw one of those, but when he makes it break bigger, it can be used as a curveball. No, no, no. Ball's off the plate. Alex had a chance to meet with his dad. His dad now. The general manager for these Tigers served an apprenticeship under Dave Dombrowski. Now he's got the club. Kensler's got him, but three hits, RBI single by Avi, and we lead it one nothing.
back here. Hey, you Sox fans, if you love Chicago <laughs> sports, you won't want to miss another great episode of Beer Money, airing Sunday night on CSN. Watch contestants test their sports trivia knowledge for the chance to win cash. Beer Money, presented by Coors Light, Sunday at 7 p.m. on CSN Chicago. Are you telling me that Dan was really excited I about want to Beer tell Money? You what, I enjoyed this. He, he was a very excited guy. He He's always he's always yeah, I mean I, I watched some of the games and he is great, he was I'll ecstatic to be there. He is he was excited. Oh yeah. He was a lot of fun. What a pitcher. 18 years. Yeah, pretty amazing. And he was a closer a lot of those years. Oh yeah. One of the greatest left-handed relievers in the game in the history. I guess you got to go with the greatest left-handed reliever. You got to go with a Roscoe, I guess, because of all the longevity and. The pitch till he was 100. I know it. You know. I think he was 46. He was still out on the mound. But Dan's right there in the top yep. three or four. Yeah, he is. There's a chopper deep in the hole, and forget it. And. Aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Here's a guy that's really struggling. However, in his history in his game, and he's played a lot for a lot of different teams, he's always swung the bat well against our Sox. Indeed, he has. Those numbers aren't too impressive, but. He's worn out right center field. Yeah, he has had big hits against us. Big hits. Mike Aviles. There you see the numbers against their Sox. 283 in 88 games, driven in 29 with four home runs. He's not a home run hitter, but he's had some very good moments. A lot with Kansas City. And now plying his trade with the Tigers. All right, boys, take it. Oops. Still turned it. Crack him up. It looked like Brett was kind of in between. He didn't exactly know if he should go to the bag or flip it to Saladino. So he's thinking about flipping it to Saladino, but as long as he's that close, and he steps right over Upton and gets the throw off. So it goes 4 3, not without an adventuresome play at second base. Which foot did you say McCann hurt? I don't know. But if he's having trouble hitting, you would have to think it would be the right foot. Yeah, because that push yeah. off foot. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of the time it's, if you're going to have trouble with the foot and hitting it's the it's the, it's the push off. Foot. Well unfortunately for him doing it at first base and doing it in spring training where he didn't have a chance to have it heal properly. It's just really plagued him because this guy. Looked like he was going to be not only a good catch but he looked like he was going to be a pretty good hitter. You better believe it last year when we saw him he looked like he knew what he was doing up there. He hit. 264 seven homers and drove in 41 in limited action. That ball hit deep in the left center field. And this game is tied at one. Unfortunately, the double play took place. This is the second home run of the year. He's now driven in 10. And our Ford home run replay. It's a fastball, and he hits a towering fly ball that is just far enough. I think Avi thought he had a chance, and at the end, it just drifted away from him. So, very happy Tiger dugout. And we've got a brand new game. And here's Iglesias. And John Walgren tells us indeed his injury was his right ankle. Well, if you if you take Salvador Perez out of the equation, McCann last year in the times we saw him looked just to be about as good as any young catcher in the league. Is that's in the gap? So that's going to be a double. 
That's the seventh two bagger. That ball was up out over the plate. This is a huge center field. And if you don't have a burner in center, you've got a problem. That's a high fastball. Iglesias does split the gap. Austin said his turf toe is coming along. Well, let's hope that it's coming along quickly because with this center field here, he'd be a handy man to have around. With us, <laughs> with a center field anywhere, he's a good man to have around. So here's Kinsler. Struck out his first trip. And there's a change up, low and away. Yeah, Austin's just absolutely come into a Sox uniform and solidified that outfield. I think the best thing that happened was that he's been able to give Adam Eaton some advice on right field where to where to set up. Adam gave Austin a whole lot of credit for telling him where to go, when to get there, how to change on counts, and Adam Eaton's turning it into, at least at this point, a Gold Glove right field year. Indeed, he has. He continues to play like this. There's no reason why he can't win it. It, it helps so much to have a guy out there who controls the outfield. And that's souvenir. Yeah, if you get and it doesn't have to be a center fielder. It could be a corner guy. Al Kaline, Hall of Famer for the Tigers. He controlled that. He put a shortstop in center field. Mickey Stanley and won a World Series with it because Kaline controlled that outfield. He positioned them. That ball hit hard. Stay in the air. Nope. And it is 2 1 Detroit. RBI number 31 for Kinsley. A lot of production out of a leadoff hitter. 11 home runs, 31 driven in. And that was a backdoor slider. He got him on it the first time up. And you know that Kinsler's thinking about that. So he dumps it in front of Shuck. And Iglesias breaks the tie. So here's Maven. Struck out on the slider, down and in. There he goes with a Lance Johnson. Bad job right there by Maven. Right handed here, you can see him breaking, you can see him going, and he still swings at it. Meanwhile, they come up with a pair and they lead it two to one.
Coldland to look forward to Miller time later in the game. Brought to you by Miller Light. It's a 2-1 Tiger lead here in the top of the third inning. And it'll be the top of the order for us. Eaton, Saladino, and Frazier. Cleveland Indians did something last night you don't see often, and that was come back late against Kansas City. And Kansas City did not close with Wade Davis. That's one of the reasons why they were able to come back. They were down two runs. They scored one against Herrera and two against Soria. And Wade Davis was nowhere to be seen. So maybe it was just a day off. If there's anything wrong with Wade Davis, it evens things up a lot. Well, you and I both are going to give Kansas City the due that in the respect that they have earned being within one out of two consecutive world championships and until somebody knocks them off you got to still consider them to be the favorites. And I was talking with Carmen and Yurko this morning and without those two guys without Gordon and Moose and Stockus I tell you that run out lineup there they're running out there right now they're gonna have a tough time beating us. Gordon's coming back and Perez is coming back Perez will be back before Gordon but after a, a broken bone in your wrist. I mean you know you have a hand injury as a hitter Nate probably can't expect Gordon to come back close to what he was when he left takes about a year to get that strength back. I've broken my right hand three times. And it takes a year to get that strength back in. And that's what it looks like with Cleveland and our Sox a game and a half back at Kansas City. Detroit comes into action today five games back. And Cleveland got Carlos Carrasco back. Now they got the same situation with Michael Brantley because he's been hurt a couple of times. He had off season shoulder surgery. They know he's going to come back. They don't know when but they don't believe as an organization he's going to come back with anything close to what he was the last couple of years when he was the leader and the offensive presence in the middle of that lineup. They got some very good starting pitching and a pretty solid bullpen. Bottom of the third in Cleveland Royals and Indians tied at one. Well, Cleveland's going to be there all year, in my opinion. They've got a terrific manager. And even with all the mixing and matching that has to be done, Terry is up to it. It's only one problem. There's that one popped up, and Cabrera makes the play. Two down. Problem for the Indians is that. For one reason or another and one is that they certainly haven't drawn and a lot of people speculate that it is and always has been a football town although they're playing the Warriors in the NBA finals. But they just don't spend a great deal of money and without spending money I mean there's going to be some definitive moves at the trading deadline could very well be that this particular race becomes a general manager's race when it comes to what you're going to spend and who you're going to acquire. That's a great point. It really is. Great point. Yes, that's and you framed it well when you say this could be a general manager's race. Well, you got you got four teams that are sitting there and they're close to one another. So an easy inning, easy inning for Zimmerman, and he leaves it two to one.
Central on CSN, a Chicago's premier nightly sports wrap show featuring the latest stories, game recaps, highlights, interviews, and more. White Sportsnet Central tonight after White Sox post game live on CSN Chicago. There's another man. Had a little short period, but he'll get another chance. Well, that was entirely not of his doing. I mean, look, you get a chance to get Joe Madden, and your ball club is on the edge of putting together something special. You go out and you get Joe Madden. I mean, he became available. You can't blame the Cubs for that, but Renteria didn't do anything wrong there. I told Theo in spring training two years ago. After we played him over third place. That's going foul. Harris and I, my wife and I are walking out after the game. And Theo comes walking by. Hi, how I said, Hi, Theo. I said, Theo, you just made the best deal you made since you've been here, buddy. <laughs> he said, what's that? I said, her and Joe Madden. That's for sure. Cabrera walked his first trip. 2 5 and 0 oh for them, 1 3 and 0 oh for us. Cabrera can take the ball out any part of the ballpark. But now this time he gets rung up, and that was in the zone. He just got out guessed. Now he looks back at John Tumpane, but that ball had the whole plate. I mean, this is a no doubter. Take a look at a good fastball. He's guessing something else. Well, you can't put the numbers up that he does unless you look for pitches. I mean, you just can't go see ball, hit ball, and put the numbers he does. Nope. You've got to guess, you've got to look for pitches. And okay, he's the smartest hitter in this league without question. Yeah. He, and I don't know anybody in the National League. I don't know him all over there, but I doubt if there's anybody over there smarter than Miguel Cabrera. Well, Alex Avila, he said something to Alex, and Alex said they had the whole plate. Here's Victor. He had a bullet down the third base line for a double. Hit the bag, as a matter of fact, right on top of it. That's the first thing the great Ted Williams, splendid splinter, the thumper, would ask you when he first met you. Do you look for pitches? And if you said no, he would absolutely eat you alive. <laughs> Some of the greatest hitters we've ever seen. And Cooperstown is filled with them with guys who look for pitches almost every pitch, certainly up until two strikes. And it does two things. It gives you a better, because occasionally you're going to be right. But it also gives you a better frame of mind because when you're thinking about that, you're not thinking about mechanics. You're not thinking about your swing. That's high and deep into right field. And it is 3 1. Victor continues to. Put together a big year. His ninth home run, his 33rd driven in, the second home run of the night, thrown by Carlos Rodon. And our fourth home run replay. We told you how easy it is to just to flip the ball out to right field. And for right handers, it's a lot easier than for left handers most of the time. So here's Martinez. You do not have to be strong to hit a ball in those seats out there in right field if you're a right handed hitter. No, that's as short a right center as we've seen in a while. Alan Porter says he did. Alan, one of the better umpires in this league. Going two to JD. He struck out swinging on the slider. It's Hopper, two Hopper. It's 
Sox fans, join us on Sunday, June 26 at 110 as our Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays. The first 5,000 girls ages 12 and under will receive a doll sized White Sox t shirt presented by American Girl. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit whitesox.com. That's 10 home runs now given up by Carlos, and that gives him the team lead by one over Matt Latos in that dubious department. Here's Upton had an infield single. Justin Upton. Along with his brother Melvin, they're the highest drafted brothers in baseball history. Justin was the first overall pick in 2005. Melvin, the second overall pick in 2002. The Upton guys did it pretty well. First of three, if you're just tuning in, here from Comerica Park. Tomorrow, the sale against Pelfrey. On Sunday, the finale of this series and this seemingly what has been a long, long road trip was a Quintana against Justin Verland. Tomorrow's game will be right here on Comcast Sportsnet and Sundays over WGN. Had some pretty big years. 31 home runs, 88 driven in with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he was the first player chosen in the draft we talked about by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Moved to San Diego last year. He's driven in 100 runs just one time with Atlanta in 2014. That's high and deep in the left center field. But we got a man there. They're teeing off a little bit on Carlos and they lead it three to one. Dan Hayes all season long on CSNChicago.com presented by the Great Escape. Pools, patio furniture, hot tubs, and more. Escape your everyday. Shop the Great Escape. Here's a Brayu. 0 for 1, grounded out to Kensler. Zimmerman, Auburndale, Wisconsin. 
Got a lot of room to work with in center field here. 420 to straightaway center. Takes a strike. Not on the inside corner. Zimmerman was a terrific football player in high school. So he's got that football mentality. And there's the shove to the right base hit. Lead off man aboard. Nice inside out swing and took it just to the left of Kinsler. So a nice way to start off the fourth inning. This ball's on the inner third. And a good chance now. The last time this part of the order hit in the second, they came up with three hits. And the only run. Shot. Singled into left field. And that's off the plate. To hang Wilfram right there for Shuck. Now they have to see if Zimmerman is okay because normally this one is right back up the middle. JB hit it awfully hard. It got a piece of Zimmerman and McCann is out there to talk with him. It goes 164. Boy, that's probably at the very least two on maybe runners at first and third, depending on just how quickly Maven would have gotten to it. But a good play by Iglesias. Indeed it was. And a tough break for us. So here's Brett. Laurie. Hit a rocket. Right back through the middle for a base hit in the second. Field for the most part straight up bit of a gap in left center. Got a boy. Catch a break there. Come on man find a gap. First at 30. After three in Cleveland, Indians leading Kansas City four to one. Stay fair. It won't. Uh, just got ahead a little too quickly. That was right down the middle. That was a slider that didn't slide. And sliders, just like curveballs, can hang. And when they do, just like curveballs, they're hit hard. Unfortunately, Brett, get out in front. Cubs shut out the D back 6 0. Lackey 6 and 2. Bradley, the loser, 2 and 1. Nice stop by McCann that looked to first base, but Shuck wasn't that far off the bag. D backs now 24 and 33, Cubs 38 and 15. Cubs off to a magnificent start. And that starting rotation has been close to unhittable. They lead all the baseball in ERA. saying if you don't have the horses you're not going to win any races. 
They got Chris Basio is finally getting some horses over they there. They got plenty of horses. <laughs> Chris. Good, good pitching coach. Get in the hole. Nope. Nice pick by Avilas. I can't get him at first. So two down. Enjoy all the benefits of being a White Sox season ticket holder by purchasing a prorated full season ticket package. To purchase, visit WhiteSox.com or call 312 674 1000 today. Here's Jimmy. He fouled out to Kinsler. Problem is now eight for 36 lifetime off Jordan Zimmerman. And of eight hits, six of them stayed in the park. Decent lead, just a decent lead by Lori. Drops a hook on him. Oh, and two. Bottom of the fourth inning, trailing by two. Brought to you by Travel Wisconsin. Plan your fun today at TravelWisconsin.com. And we'll take a look. Two more with the Tigers, and mercifully, this road trip will end. And then it's the Dusties who come to town. The Nationals on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after the off day Monday. And Bryce Harper has been nicked up a bit. We'll see if that continues. And tomorrow, that's from the old Negro Leagues. The Chicago Americans and that's what the Sox will be wearing tomorrow as Chris Sale goes to the mound. And here's Mike Aviles. Mike hit the ball hard but it went into a 4 3 double play.
Two and one. Three runs, six hits, no errors for their guys. One run, four hits, no errors for our guys. They have two home runs. One by McCann and one by Victor Martinez. Grabs the strike there. Two and two. Talked with Alex before the game today, and his daughter had a chance to see her grandfather, but that was yesterday, and the Yankees were in town for a makeup game, so Alex did not have a chance to see his dad, Al Avila. That's foul. Al is the executive vice president of baseball operations and general manager, and served his apprenticeship under Dave Dombrowski. And He's going to turn into a very good GM and Mike Illich the owner is going to spend as much as it takes to try to get this job done but they have got to rework that bullpen because it's been most disappointing in the early going. They got a couple of guys that they can depend on and other than that it's been very difficult for them. All right take your time. One out. That bullpen's been in bad shape for a long time. Yeah, they, they thought, and it usually what happens is you think you're assembling a, a ball club that is going to be good enough, and you make some acquisitions, and you think you're going to fill the holes in the pen, and sometimes it just does not work out that way. Well, they've had the position players and the starting pitching to do a lot of damage in this division for a long time. Well, they thought they got a premier setup man in Mark Lowe. He's got a 779 ERA. So it's been really tough for him. If they had had a good bullpen, yeah, it would have been a different story in the American League Central for a few years. Frankie Rodriguez has done a nice job at the end. He's got 15 saves. They got the second worst bullpen this year. Yep. 4.71. Been very, very tough for them. So it's that old saying, let's get to the bullpen in a hurry. Something you don't want to say about too many clubs. Bullpen's so different. Al Kalen and I were talking about that earlier before the game. About how his certainly has changed in that issue. He gone. Five strikeouts, and here's Iglesias who doubled into left center field. First pitch strike. There he is, number six. What a player. What a player. So that's in the right field. So a nice one, two, three inning. He needed that. And we're into the fifth, trailing three to one.
Mechanicsville Telephone Company in Mechanicsville, Iowa. In the second inning. His ball in the center field and first run scores and with that first White Sox run E click landing will donate one hundred dollars to the Pat Tillman Foundation supporting military veterans and their families. And here is Avi. We're in the top of the fifth inning we trail it three to one. Watch out. Breaking ball got away. First time Zimmerman has been out there in a while with that groin issue. Yeah, there really isn't any restrictions on him tonight as far as pitches are concerned, but when you haven't thrown in a couple weeks, you wonder just how long he's going to be there. He's used to going deep into games, and they've had bullpen problems, so you would think he'd be around for a bit. Softly hit up the middle. We'll take a look at Zimmerman coming up with a groin injury and that put him on the disabled list. That was on May 22nd. So here is Alex grounded out to Kensler as they put the shift on. Takes first pitch strike. Not a bad crowd on hand. They're averaging 29,291. All right, Alex, just put one down on the left side now. It's, it's too late. 0 oh 2. If they show any signs of life, and they have occasionally, then they're going to start to draw because this has always been a very good baseball town. Well, this is used to be my favorite team to play against the Tigers. It was very spirited. Let's put it that way. Sacks it up. There is Al on the left to the general manager and Alex on the right to the catcher. Spent a lot of time in that Tiger uniform. I don't know Al, but I've gotten to know Alex, and I'll tell you, he is a perfect gentleman. Absolutely. Which is a credit to his parents. I met his wife and daughter today. Cute little girl. And they're enjoying their stay in Detroit with the off day yesterday. Full count. There you look at what he did with the Tigers. Not bad. 242 batting average had at least four concussions that they know of, possibly more. He got beat up a lot. Oh, that was crazy. I mean, it was insane yeah. the way against us. That's the only way we know it. I'm sure we weren't the only team, but against us, it was just ridiculous how many shots he got off the face mask, off the shoulder, off the cup, I, everywhere. I talked to Jim Price, the radio analyst. Former catcher yeah, for the Tigers. been here a long time, and he said that Alex just took a terrific beating when he was in that Tiger uniform. And there is a look at Jim Price now. He just got a haircut. This is a man. I that, like it. This is a man that grows hair very well. Always has, but just got a short haircut today. And get that youthful look. He was a very good catcher. Well, he was on that 68. Detroit team that he says was the best Tiger team ever. Well, I played against that team as he got him. 
Two down. But that 68 Tiger team that won the world championship. Mickey Lolich winning three games in that series against the Cardinals. Also hitting a home run. The first one he ever hit. Out dueling Bob Gibson. Mickey Lowe's one of the greatest left-handers I ever faced. Starters. I mean, he just wore me out with that slider down and in and painting the outside corner with that good sneaky low fastball. That was the year that Denny McLean became the last pitcher ever to win 30 games in a season. Won 31 games. He beat us at Fenway Park when I was with Boston for his 25th. And Sandy Koufax was there and he was going to be doing the game the next day for one of the networks. And we had dinner. He asked if I'd have some dinner with him after the game on Friday night. Sure. And we talked and we we're talking about that. He said that one inning that he struck out Dalton Jones, Jastrzemski, and myself for the bases loaded. And nobody out was one of the greatest innings pitch that Sandy had ever seen. He got Dalton Jones on three straight high fastballs. He got Carl Owen two on two high fastballs. Foul one back threw him another high fastball. Struck him out. Seven straight fastballs. Now I'm coming up. Bases loaded two out. I'm looking for the high fastball. He threw me three sliders on the black and I just grabbed some bench. <laughs> never had never swung to bat. Never took it off my shoulder. Pretty good one too that year. McLean and Lolich. Well, McLean had 26 complete games that year as that's into Maven territory, and that'll retire the side. We're halfway home. We trail it three to one. Buddy. Well, Dave Ross is just telling us at the break there that when you go on the emergency, family emergency, you have to miss three days. It's not an option. Yes. So here we go. Bottom of the fifth. They lead it three to one. Top of the order, Kensler, Maven, and Cabrera. Kensler, one for two with an RBI.
Visit participating Chicagoland Great Clips Salon by June 10th for the Great Clips Summer Sweepstakes. The grand prize winner throws out the first pitch at Mullet Night on Friday, June 24th, plus White Sox tickets and a pregame patio party. So, Great Clips, it's going to be great. Purchase your tickets today at WhiteSox.com or call 866-SOX-GAME. So here's Maven. Struck out and grounded out to Saladino at short. Had a bad idea, just not particularly good technique as he has that bat almost behind him trying to push it to the right side. With the left hander on the mound, it's a great idea if you can push it right at the second baseman or make the first baseman come wide of the bag. That's into short center field. And aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. So here's Cabrera, walk and a strikeout. Willie Joyner says that he's got the eye of a man who draws a lot of walks. He's got the ability to put the ball in play and move it all over like a guy who's a ping hitter and a high average hitter. He has tremendous strength, which is a combination that makes him as good as there is in the game. He says, you find other guys that have parts of what he has, but very few guys have that combination to get it. High pop up. And another nice one two three innings retired the last eight in a row but. Tigers lead it three to one. With White Sox checking and an official White Sox MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. So go to Wintrust.com slash Sox to learn more. Member FDIC. Well, that might behoove us to start trying to work the baseball a little bit. Can't do it right here with them playing in normal positions, but if they start shifting. Lay it down and get him first base. As there is ball one. Saladino was grounded to short and fouled out to Cabrera at first. Avilas is in at third base. He's even with the bag. Now he takes a couple of steps back as Saladino did not show a bunt.
Since May 6th, things have been going pretty well, hitting 320. Couple of home runs, 10 driven in. And scoring eight, including this evening where he has not done anything. Ball hit hard, but hits the mound. Caroms over towards Kensler, and that's a tough break right there for Saladino. One out. Now the Sox come in at 16 to 13 on the road. Thirteen and twelve at home. Now they're going out there and they're talking with Zimmerman. It is a one four three put out. I think they were checking if he was okay. So here's Frazier, strike out and a ground out to short. There's a strike. Yeah, take another look at this. Yeah, got off the oh, he got off the no, got him off the wrist. So one four three. And the count one and two. Those sixteen road wins. For our Sox, so the second best in the American League. That one at ninety one up and out. But little wind there is is blowing straight in from left center field, but it's not really affecting too much of anything. Full count. You see a beautiful ballpark with all kinds of room in the outfield. And there is ball four. So that is the second walk. Check that first walk issued. As part of Sox Serve Week, the White Sox Wives and White Sox Volunteer Corps are celebrating Southpaw's birthday. Bring a new unwrapped toy on Sunday, June 12th to drop off at locations at U.S. Cellular Field, and $10 cash donations are also accepted. So it helps Southpaw celebrate his birthday and do something good at the ballpark. Here's a Brayu. He's one for two. Grounded a second and then hit a single in the hole between first and second. Right. Takes a strike right there. Sox looking for their 50th home run. Tigers have 69. We're playing two home run hitting teams back to back the Mets and the Tigers. Boy, the Mets got some bad news today. David Wright's going to miss six to, six to eight weeks with that neck issue. But we talked about it in New York. I was absolutely shocked they didn't put him on the DL because he got a herniated disc, which necessitated taking an injection into that, along with spinal stenosis. And they hesitated until they couldn't wait any longer. But 
he's really battled a lot of back problems in recent years. I talked to him yesterday and he he sounded good but he very very disappointed. He is the face of that franchise and one hell of a player. Yeah, and along with Lucas Duda being out that's two bats out of the lineup that really hurt the offense and if they're going to get it done they're going to have to do it on exceptional starting pitching because yeah. they've got a wonderful rotation. Yeah they can pitch it. Yeah they can. Yeah you lose right. A couple of months. But they're they're one they're one team because of that pitching maybe can overcome it. Be a little tougher in the American League where you get to score more runs. Well, they might be able to make up some of that lack of offense with a designated hitter, but in the National League, you right. don't you don't have that luxury. You don't. You don't have to score as many over there. The pen up and going. It's Alex Wilson who has actually done a nice job for them. As Zimmerman will deliver his 87th pitch. One out, one on, and the one two pitch. That ball hit hard into the gap. Nobody's going to get that one. Todd reading it perfectly. He's going to come around. He's going to score on the double by Abreu. And it's a 3 2 Tiger lead. Tiger number 29 and the second hit of the night for Jose as he drills that ball into right center field. This isn't a bad pitch. It's out away from Jose. But he gets every bit of it. One hop the scoreboard. And Todd Frazier with a good read scores easily. Yeah, Todd's one of the few guys we got on our team. He knows where those outfielders are. He's a good, solid base runner. He's a good, solid yeah. baseball player. Yeah. Good baseball acumen. So here's Chuck. He's hit the ball hard twice. Once for a single. Then once into a 1 6 4. And that's back to the middle. Stopped by Iglesias. Nice play. Gets him. Beautiful play by Jose Iglesias. Two down. Normally, this is a tie game because when you hit the ball back up the middle, especially to the pitcher's left, you figure there's no way the shortstop. He's going to get it on the first base side a second. But Iglesias with a nice slide, getting it over there quickly, and we're going to see a trip to the mound to find out just exactly what Zimmerman has left. So it's Brad Osmus who goes out there. He knows Wilson is ready. He's asking Zimmerman, You got enough? Can you get out of this inning? Because he knows that Lowry has been up twice and hit the ball hard twice. So he got the answer he wanted. And Brett Laurie will have a chance to drive in at the very least the tying run. Well, Glacius missed the entire 2014 season with bilateral tibial stress fractures. It's amazing to have a stress fracture in both shins. Never never heard of that before. Well, I'll tell you one thing, he he is another one of these great talented young shortstops in the American League. Or and around baseball. Never in my career has there been this many outstanding talented young shortstops. Close, didn't get it, and the count two and zero. Sorry, almost dehorned. Zimmerman with a rocket back through the middle in the second. 
And hit into a 5 4 fielder's choice. Pick him up, Brett. Well, this is pretty close to a pitch around, realizing that Lurie has swung the bat very well tonight against him. And he's handled Jimmy Rollins and kept him in the infield. Turn him loose right here, Robin. So he threw a slider, knowing that he's got first base open. He's not looking 3 0 slider. And he put it in the zone. That was absolutely a pitch around. Yeah. And that's going to be it. It looks like Brad Osmus is going to go to the mound. And he is going to make the change as Alex Wilson. Well, Zimmerman came in with some impressive numbers, seven and two with a 2.52. Missed a couple of weeks with that groin problem, so I'm sure that Osmus is very, very pleased with what he saw out there from that 30-year-old veteran right-hander. Well, he got 93 pitches, and now he'll walk out. And as he walks out, we'll step out and be back after these messages. Our might is called to the pen, and it is Alex Wilson. So he comes on. ZRA five and a half, 24 hits and 19 and two thirds, but he hasn't walked too many people. Surprisingly, it's been the right-handers that have hurt him, hitting 354. He's allowed a couple of home runs, and he inherits a couple of base runners. And he'll be looking in at Jimmy Rollins. Rollins has fouled out to Kensler and struck out. The runners at the corners. And the outfield straight away. 3 6 and 0 for the Tigers, 2 5 and 0 for our Sox here in game one of this three game series. Wilson, born in Saudi Arabia, pitched collegiately. At Texas A&M, oh, I won the count. Got Kensler playing back on the grass, so if he were to take a little drag money here and get it by Wilson. We might have ourselves a tie ball game. Well, unless he drastically changes, I'm not sure that's on the agenda. <laughs> you think? <laughs> One and two the count. This is one of the few teams that does not shift on him and now with two strikes they're moving Iglesias more up the middle but 
They usually against Jimmy Rollins have three guys on the first base side of second. A little bigger lead now by Brett. Bit of a gap out there in right center. And a lot of room between JD Martinez and that right field line. Abreu at third. Checks it up two and two. It's full with Avi Garcia on deck. Good pitch. All right, we pick up one seventh inning stretch. No, bottom of the sixth inning, I should say. We trail it three two. Mobile. Greater coverage of baseball, and it's the pitchers and the players of the month. Jackie Bradley Jr. for his 29 game hitting streak. You can certainly understand that. All he did was hit 381 with eight home runs and 24 driven in. And a resurgent Rich Hill of the Oakland Ball Club, 5 and 1, a 213 ERA now that he's a starter. And Daniel Murphy, and we'll see him as Washington comes to town after an off day. And Clayton Kershaw, he could be the pitcher of the month just about every month. Because he doesn't give up anything anymore. He and Jake Arietta as a twosome, pretty close to unbeatable. Victor Martinez, JD Martinez, and Justin Upton. Victor has doubled hard down the third baseline and homered into the bleachers in right field. You just joining us. We scored one in the second. They scored two in the second. They added one in the third. We just picked up one here in the top of the six. As there is a strike. Count evens at one. Cut. 
He did not go. Heel to Allen Porter and he said nope. Cleveland leading Kansas City four to one top of the seventh. That progressive field. Salazar pitching for the tribe and. He's limited to Kansas City just two hits. High pop up. Adam a long way to go. He'll get there. That is a shot from the blimp. A beautiful sunset. And that's another shot from the blimp. High above the ballpark. Here's a shot from the lower blimp. JD has struck out and grounded to short. Certainly fit in that category between the guy with some promise 26 and 28. Come into your own, figure it out. Fans experience Levy Restaurants fine dining and service. In the First Merit Bank Stadium Club, memberships are available to season ticket holders, and First Merit Bank Stadium Club is also perfect for non game day events, including weddings and corporate parties. For more information, please call 312 674 1000. Second walk issued by Carlos, and here's Upton. Had an infield single and went out deep to left. When this man, young man first came up to the big leagues, he hit some landmarker home runs. He's always been a streaky hitter, and the Tigers are waiting for that streak to take hold. Because they got him to drive in some big runs for them, and so far, there not you go. much. Low throw. Short hopped in. And the problem. On a short hop, and it's very difficult for any infielder to do this, is that you've got to come up with the hop. And when you come up with the hop, if the base stealer stays down, he's going to get that leg in. And you see him come up with the hop. He tries to bring it down as quickly as he can, but cannot get it done. That's number one. First stolen base of the year. Well, he certainly was safe. Now they're going to go ahead and say, let's play. Yeah, there was not a debatable issue there. One out, one and one to count. In the right field. He's not going anywhere. I don't that gun. Two down. That's one of the better straight changes that Carlos has thrown. Upton got it off the end of the bat. Couldn't get anything in it. So here is Avilas, 0 for 2. But these are spots right here that he has really hurt us in the past. Alfield straight up 
spread out, spaced about equal distance. If he's planning to stay away, you've got to watch right center. It's a wild pitch as that one bounds away. And so after the first stolen base of the year, J.D. Martinez is now perched at third base. And that's just the third wild pitch for Carlos. Alex tries the best he can, moves to his left, has it hit off the chest protector, but because he couldn't take enough time to get it angled, it bounded away. And the 2 0 count. James McCann on deck. So we shall see what Osmus wants to do. Taking all the way. And a Terrific pitch to hit three and oh. And here comes Coop. Two walks this inning. You look at that gorgeous shot right there. And third of the game. Ninety four pitches to this point as Don Cooper comes out to settle him down. In the second, and he struck out in the fourth. The homer just his second of the season. Takes first pitch strike. Sox bullpen up and going. One one pitch. He's on top of him. Good hard slider down and in off the plate and McCann went after it and. Can't do much with that. So Tommy Canely. Throwing into pen. He was brought back. But Melky went on the emergency family leave. So Canely getting another shot. At the corners, two down, and the count hangs at one and two. That was 
Carlos Rodon reaching back and throwing the best fastball he's thrown all night. It's a very good chance that Don Cooper said, "Look, give me everything you've got, because this is most likely going to be it." As he gets ready to deliver pitch number 99. And another souvenir. It's 98 miles an hour, and that's as hard as we've seen Carlos Rodon throw this year. And he threw him back to back. There you look at the numbers. Trying to get through the sixth inning and keep this a one run ball game. And once again, a one two. His top fastball 98. We mentioned it with the previous two. That slider, he's got it up to 90, and the changeup as high as 87. That's popped up into short center field. JB did not get a good jump on it. And because of that, as he's out at home plate, they're going to score another run. He misread it, falls in. And we will go to the seventh, trailing 4 2. Speed action replay and just saw the sunset night has not taken over yet and it becomes difficult to see the ball and JB just doesn't see it doesn't make the catch and then Brent Lowry makes a good solid throw home and they cut down Michael Bielis but not before the Tigers score another run. Our Xfinity high speed action and it's a 4 2 put out. So a gift run for him, and it'll be Garcia, Avila, then back to the top of the order, Adam Eaton. Javi. One for two, a solid single to drive in a run in the second inning. Wilson's first pitch is a strike. Upson, Upton in left field can obviously come in a little better. He can go back because that's as deep with nobody on as you'll see anybody play. Well, especially with the. Two run lead. 
<laughs> kind of surprising, actually. Yeah. But you don't know your limitations. One and two of the count. Dogs have a number one prospect tearing it up in Tim Anderson. And the Tigers number one prospect Michael Fulmer is here in the major leagues. Thrown it pretty well. They lose. One out. Join us for Selfie Sunday on June 12th. Fans that purchase this special ticket offer can join us on the outfield warning track of U.S. Cellular Field to take selfies with select White Sox players. To purchase, please visit whitesox.com slash Selfie Sunday. Alex is grounded to second and then struck out. Quite a different set of cultures for Wilson and where he was born and where he grew up. Born in Saudi Arabia and grew up in Hurricane, West Virginia. Two and oh, don't help him out. That ball was out of the zone and he did help him out. Downtown Detroit on this beautiful night. That ball hit hard. Nobody's going to get that one. That's a gapper. Alex will make the turn. And he'll pull up at second with his fourth two back. Well, the two players that played for the Tigers, Abasil Garcia had an RBI base hit in the second, and now Alex Avila with a double with one out here in the seventh. So that one down the middle. And even with the shift, he splits the gap. Pick him up. Here's Adam. He's going out to right, grounded to second, and going out to center. Close pitch, and it goes Adam's way. One and zero. Saladino on deck. Here in the top of the seventh, if you're just joining us. That's out of play to even the count at one. First of three here in seventh of what has turned out to be a nine game road trip. Eleven days, nine games. One and two. That 
They're leaving. Outfield shading Adam a couple of steps. To the left of center, you see the gap in right center field. If he can get out in front of one, yeah, he can run for a while. Bobby Parnell loosening up, and at one point, he was the pride and joy. Of the New York Mets. I know the Sox were very interested in acquiring him, and at the time, he was not available. Had a few injury problems, and here he is in Detroit. Full count. And there, it's low ball four. So now that'll put. The tying runs aboard, and here comes Tyler. I can't out to have a word with Wilson. This could very possibly be on instructions from the dugout. To see if that they can get Parnell loosened up quickly enough. Got a little something going here and now. Pitching coach out. Rich Doobie coming out. So Wilson has joined Parnell. That's Justin Wilson. Canely continues to throw. He should be really loose by now. Frazier on deck as Tyler steps into that box. Tyler's 0 for 3. Last time up hit a bullet back through the middle, deflected off the glove of the wrist of Zimmerman. Over to Kensler as he takes the B pitch. Tough pitch. The bullpen for Detroit has been very porous this year. Uh oh. Seventh inning stretch, we trail it four to two.
afternoon, Chris Sale looks to become the first pitcher to win 10 games this season as our Sox face these Tigers. Coverage begins at 2.30 with White Sox pregame live presented by the Koalas family of dealerships on CSN. A new pitcher coming in the game, and it is Tommy Canely. This is fifth game, his ERA 270. Four walks in three and a third. And he starts with the bottom and then heads right back to the top, hoping to make sure that Miguel Cabrera, who's due up fourth this inning, does not get up this inning. Iglesias, one for two, a double run scored, and he's gone out to right field. First pitch strike. For Carlos Rodon, six innings, four runs, all earned, but only three of them should have scored on seven hits with three walks and five strikeouts. Curveball. Whoa, where'd that come from? 0 oh 2. He had Iglesias buckling away from that one. We got a few of them buckling away on that one. Knocks it down, picks it up, steps on the bag, one out. Follow White Sox Baseball Live with MLB.com at Bat F. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. It'll bring up Kensler. He's one for three with an RBI. Picked up his 31st ribby in the second inning. One of the better fastball hitters on this team. Maybe the best. Checks it up on that one at 97. A few Sox fans in attendance. Always a lot of Sox fans here in Detroit. That one at 98. Two and one. Giants got a very bad break. Hunter Pence to undergo surgery on a torn right hamstring. Yeah, that is lost for at play. least eight weeks. Boy, he's another guy I love to watch play. He's High another, energy. Another guy who lately has had a lot of injury problems. When he's healthy, he's one of the stars of that very talented Giants team, and they have quite a pitching staff. Three one. Not the man you want to put on for the simple reason he's the best base stealer on a team that doesn't steal bases. Although they have one tonight, it led to a run when J.D. Martinez walked, stole a base last inning, and Kinsler, who's stolen seven of them, been caught twice. Seven of the 18 the Tigers have all year. Maven. Struck out, grounded to short, and going out to center.
Top of the ninth in Cleveland, 6 1 Indians over Kansas City. Canely, this is a big pitch to 1 1 because you don't want him to fall behind. Lead there. You got to make those guys stop. Well aware of the tendencies of Ian Kinsley. And not too much time. There he goes. Can't get him. Can't get him. Well, Tigers don't have a whole lot of speed, but two of the guys that do have speed are the two guys involved in that play as Kinsler off with the pitch on the broken bat. It slowly hit. Lowry cannot get it to first base in time, and Kinsler. Just continues to take off. So that walk now on third base. The walk last inning came around the score. It's a base running by Ian Kinsler, and he's a good base runner. Yes, he is. He cannot cut him down, so runners at the corners. That's going to be a base hit. Oh, yeah. It's a base hit. And here is the man that you. Don't want to see. And I think Alex Avila was looking at Jose Abreu and said, "Wait a second, you can't be playing that far off the bag. There's only one out." He was. <laughs> he thought there was. I don't know what he thought, but at well, any rate, he wouldn't have made any difference. He's back, he's back to where he should be, holding Maven close at first. He was back there like there was a man on second. Cabrera's walk struck out and fouled out to Avila. Good job by Avila. Good job by Avila and real bad base running on the part of Maven. If he takes off, especially with Kinsler at third, there's no way Avila's going to be able to throw him out at second base. Runners in scoring position, hitting an even 300, which is actually below what he's hitting this year. And if he can hit the ball on the ground, it's a guaranteed two. He's grounded into six double plays this year. That one in 96. Big spot for us in this ball game. Yeah, 
And now the count goes to Miguel. Matt Perk loosening up. And that's why Avila is out to the mound because I think Robin has decided he'd rather face Victor Martinez from the right side instead of the left. Five two ball game on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Well, that wall comes around the score. This one low and down the middle, and Miguel Cabrera doesn't usually miss these. Well, he knows he's got a rookie out there. He knows he doesn't have pinpoint control. He knows he's going to get the gas. That's what he got. And the biggest thing in that situation right there is not trying to do too much with it, which he did. No, he's well, just too smart a hitter for that. So he just wanted to get the run in. Yep. And RBI number 33. And that will bring up Victor Martinez. There's a couple of hits. And he came in hitting well. Now he's hitting 242. Move that batting average up five points. A double and a homer. 42. Now he knows what's coming from Canley. He's going after it himself. Day yesterday, but on Wednesday, thirteen in a game, we used seven relievers. And most of those guys were the same guys used on Tuesday: Jennings, Albers, Duke, and Jones. That Tuesday game. Just they have a pitcher, six relievers. Miguel Gonzalez went five innings. Giving up one run on three hits, but he walked five. Four to the leadoff man of an inning. Take a look at the bullpen against the Royals. It was sad. A big bounce back against the Mets, however. No runs in 13 innings. And you win the last two games of the series. Especially extra innings on the road. Tough to win those long extra inning games on the road. Yeah, that game went four hours and 41 minutes. Well, you 
can bring up all the sabermetrics you want. You can bring up all the stats you want. And it boils down to who's going, whose bullpen is going to get it done. Maven's going to score. It's a 6 2 ball game. Third hit of the night, and only a triple separates Victor Martinez from the cycle as he drives in his well, he's not going 33rd to get the round. No, he's not going to get a triple. So the one out walk to Kensler started this thing. Then a broken bat infield single on the hit and run. Cabrera had to count. Just rocketed a single in the right field for an RBI. Victory just a little Kansas City special right there for another RBI. And here's JD. He's 0 for 2. He walked last inning with one out, stolen base. Then he scored on a high pop up to center field. It was misjudged, fell in for the run. Checks it up, takes a strike. Six ten and zero for them. Two six and zero for us. And the pitchers of record are the starters: Zimmerman and Rodon. Get to pass along congratulations to Chuck Swirsky. Going to be inducted in the Chicago Sports Hall of Fame this September. Along with Carlton Fisk, Ryan Sandberg, and Dennis Savard. Congratulations, Chuck. Yes. Good man. Chuck's a good man. Going to the count. At that when he was all over just underneath it. That's pitch he loves to hit to right center field. Fortunately, he did follow it back. The game tomorrow is a 308 Central Time start. Chris Sale against Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey 0 and 5 with an ERA just under 5. Chris Sale looking for win number 10. He got a cookie there and missed it. Miguel Cabrera fan. And there's a base hit. 
They'll just move up 90 feet and that'll load them up. Fourth hit of the inning. They go along with the one out walk. Here's Upton. Had an infield single. Went out deep to left and he popped up to right. Breaking ball, no. With that Indian win tonight, they move a half a game behind Kansas City and they're even with them in the loss column. Indians have now won three in a row. Well, we talked about Kansas City with the TWTW. Cleveland's got it too. Lindor has done an unbelievable igniting job. They also have some starting rotation, and now Barrera. they're going to take a look at something they don't want to see, and that is Miguel Cabrera. Go mine. Andrew Romine. This man loves to play, so for him to take himself out is not good for them. Right off the mask of Avila once again. I mean, that got him flush again. That could have been it right there. Yeah, it looks like, well, if it's an oblique, that's a problem. More look, look like something on his back. But if it's oblique or a back, yeah. And two with two in, one out, two on.
Got a lot of help right there. He just wanted one a good six inches outside. A lot of help right there. And once again, aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Mike Avilis. Mike 0 for 2 with a base on balls. But that base on balls figured in a run. Career with the bases loaded for Avilas. Not great. Oh, he got a hanger and popped it up. Thank you very much. Watch out. Tyler, Avi, I don't know. He looked like he was calling for it. Meanwhile, they score a pair. They do some damage. We're into the eighth trailing 6-2. Detroit, South Paul. Justin Wilson coming on. One and one, 11 holes, 392 ERA, 20 and two thirds, 20 hits, four walks, 29 strikeouts. Also moving into first base for Miguel Cabrera, Andrew Romine, and Cabrera indeed left with lower back tightness. So that's not good news for the Tigers. Good news for us, but not for the Tigers. No, anytime the big boy leaves his lineup, it looks a whole lot different, and he's listed day to day. Backs are tricky. So here is Todd over two with a walk and a run score. Takes it off the outside corner for a ball. Then we've seen dueling Wilsons in this game. That one just does catch the outside corner.
Now field there straight up spread out and deep in center and in left. That fastball at 92 and the count one and two. Romine well off the line at first base. Start us off. We Got our bullpen out there and they got into it with a couple. Let's reciprocate. That fastball at 96. Full count. Last year, Wilson with the Yankees, 5 0, 3 10 ERA in 74 games. It's a very impressive year for him. In fact, he moved as a bullpen mainstay when Adam Warren moved to the rotation because of Sabathia being hurt. One out. Interesting story with Wilson. That is, you know, the story is that he just had a wonderful run with the Yankees, and it's somewhat surprising that he winds up here. But when the Yankees got Chapman, boy, they were loaded at the back end of the pen. In today's culture of the way the game is played, basically a six inning game, it's almost impossible to have too much talent in the bullpen. <laughs> in the back end? Well, well, if you got that much in the back end and you got somebody like Wilson to go yeah. in before them, that even uh, makes it double trouble. Well, I talked with Larry Rothschild. They were here. They played yesterday on an off day, a common off day. The Yankees were here. and. Detroit came in from Anaheim where they played the Angels and the Yankees came in from Toronto. They both get in fairly late and nobody gets in much later than Detroit. A lot of guys got home at six o'clock in the morning. Well they got in at four thirty. But I, I talked with Larry Rothschild the pitching coach of the Yankees and I talked to him about the back end of that bullpen. The Batances Miller Chapman back end and I said have you ever seen anything like it. He said no he said those guys. 1990 he was with the Cincinnati Reds when Lou went wire to wire with the Reds that back end the nasty boys at the back end were just outstanding he said they they probably were better pitchers with Dibble Randy Myers and Norm Charlton he said but they didn't have the pure stuff of Batances and Miller and Chapman. Well, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody does have the pure stuff of those. I've three never guys. seen it. No. I've never seen it in my career. I've been around longer than Rothschild. Yeah. It just never has never happened. So he's been the no, bit. those guys, Charlton and those guys, they had pretty good stuff, but not like this. But they were indeed better pitchers. Yeah. And Larry was a beneficiary of both of those groups. That wire to wire with the Reds that Lou was able to put together was remarkable. Well, that was just a defining point of an issue. Fellas, we're going to make this a six inning game in the major leagues as he gets. Abreu is now two for four. He had an RBI double in the sixth. You got to get yourself in a position where you can manage a six inning ball game. <laughs> the 
and then hope along the way that your starters can indeed. That's what starters are for today. They're protect the bullpen. And when you get one lucky enough to have one like Chris Sale and a Quintana, a one two punch like that, you're in pretty good shape. You are that. And your big guys at the top, your number ones and twos, they've got to give your bullpen rest. If they have a couple of disasters, then you've got some big problems in the pen. A lot of folks enjoying their night on the roof of the music hall. There's a chopper, two hopper. Couple strikeouts, ground out. We we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Not good. Coming in the game in relief of Tommy Canely. And it is Matt Perk. So there you look at the numbers. On for the fourth time. He's been pretty good out of the pen. Five and two thirds, four hits. And that's been it. Twenty five year old Southpaw, six four, two hundred fifteen pounds. That ball in the right center field hit well. Nobody's going to get it. McCann. Safe. A homer, RBI single. It was a pop up that was misjudged, and now the triple. And he is a double shy of the cycle. Not likely to get another at bat as Matt Perk gives up one crush to the alley and then it's off to the races. You don't find many catchers able to run that way, but he's in just under the tag. So here's Iglesias with the infield in. Perk out of TCU.
Six twelve and zero for their guys. Two six and zero for our guys. And the count three and zero. J.D. Martinez keeps track of how every one of his at bats goes, how every pitcher works him. And it seems to work pretty well for him. Because he's coming over to Detroit. He has resurrected what at one point looked like a promising career, only to be released. Well, when they got him, they sent him to Toledo. And he had 10 quick home runs down there after changing his swing, as there is a. Changing his swing is a very difficult thing to do. It can be done. It's been done many, many times. Alex Rodriguez has changed this swing several times. He's got a lot of home runs. <laughs> yeah, he's got a few of them. But well, usually in the change swing, it's almost a concession to the aging process. But with Martinez, he just figured with his hands up that high, he couldn't get around on inside fastballs. Then yeah, you flipped that page, and there are a lot of guys in Cooperstown that had their hands real high. That Loved it. Stand up hitters with high hands. That's why it's just such an interesting, intricate game. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Kensler, one for three with a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. Field. Big gap out there in left center. Alex, he's had his hands full tonight. Frankie Rodriguez in the bullpen. So apparently he can use an inning of work. There's look at the man that did have a bout with the Zika virus. So that wasn't particularly pleasant. Picked it up in. Venezuela. And there's a base hit. Seven two. Second run driven in by Kinsler, who also has a walk to go with it. He now has 32. So 32 runs batted in for Kinsler, 33 for Cabrera, 33 for Victor Martinez, and 30 for J.D. Martinez. Well, that's got us covered. <laughs> They got plenty of offense. The question is, will that bullpen hold up? Not status quo. Cool. No, they're going to have to make some some deals. And Tigers have shown over the years that they're not afraid to make substantial deals. Maven. Had a little broken bat, soft, hit and run infield single. It's one for four. Dave Clark, the coach at third. Omar Vizquel, the coach at first.
There's a strike. So two balls, one strike. With a 29 year old center fielder. As I mentioned, that game tomorrow, Chris Sale against Mike Pelfrey. And that will be a 308 Central Time start. Finale of this series in this road trip on Sunday, 1208 start. Was they contend against Justin Verlander? Tomorrow, right here on Comcast Sportsnet on Sunday, WGN. Full count of these swings the ball four. Roman in the on deck circle. He came on when Cabrera. Had to be taken out of the ball game after a base hit. He ran to third base and said he had some back issues, some tightening up of the lower back. So one in. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Now Don Cooper is going to come out. Now Coop's going to try to give him something positive, but the whole gist is it's your ball. It's you against the world. That's it. So it's your ball. And nobody's going to take it away from <laughs> you. So get out of it yourself somehow. What's what's the craziest thing any pitching coach ever told you when he came out? If anything. Oh yeah, I remember nobody on base, second inning, very early in my years with Baltimore, Ray Miller, the pitching coach, comes running out to the mound. There's nobody on, nothing's going on. And I look at him, I said, What's going on? He said, I got a message for you. I said, What's that message? He says, Throw the ball, your infielders are falling asleep. <laughs> and then he turned around, ran back to the dugout. And you know he made his point and then I worked very quickly after that and it seemed to work very well. Go mine. Two and the count. I used to when I was Playing first base, they used to love to go over there and listen to what they were going to tell the pitcher. Yeah, I mean, well, sometimes there's really not much you can do, especially if a guy can't get the ball close to the plate. Like three and zero. Oh. Now, yeah. Elston Howard was with us. It was a pretty big game too. I'm not going to mention the guy's pitcher's name because he's still alive. I was playing first base. Ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four. ball one, ball two, strike, ball three, and after that, Kelly comes out to the mound. And I come walking over first base. And he looks this guy he gets about four or five inches from his nose right in his face. <laughs> and it's eight two. So. He says. You better start throwing strikes if you don't. When this ball game is over, I'm going to take you in that clubhouse and I'm going to beat the you know what out of you. Well, that gave him some incentive. Strike one, <laughs> strike two. That's a little incentive. Oh, yeah. You see Victor with the bases loaded. You just don't want to face him with the bases loaded. Boy, he has been some kind of clutch hitter. 
He's been had a tremendously successful career and a very respected one from everybody. A tremendous competitor. Last triple for Victor Martinez, and he needs one for the cycle, was in 2010. So, unless one of the outfielders falls down, rolls over, rolls over again, probably no triples. September 18th of 2010. Two and one. That one's got Dan Jennings loosening up in the pen. Doesn't particularly want to use him, but realizes there is a day game tomorrow. Take it yourself. Two down, another run across his plate. So it's nine two. Kinsler has scored two runs in tonight's ball game. And for him, that's 46 runs scored this year. That is a whopping total. Off the glove. Good effort right there by Brett. That ball was scalded by Martinez. And it's 10 2. RBI number 31 on the second hit for Martinez. Lowry with a big effort, but not quite tall enough. So here's Upton. Two and That's in the right field. Adams there makes a running catch, but some damage is done. Four spot goes up on that board. We're into the ninth. We trail it by eight.
Earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite and the Tigers, amongst a lot of other hits and walks and various things, have hit a couple of home runs. And that's McCann in the second. And that is Victor Martinez. That opposite field home run. And that one came in the third. So it's been all Tigers tonight. And Bobby Parnell comes in. That's his numbers in 21 games at Toledo. ERA just under four. He did have four saves, however. A few too many walks per innings pitched. And before he got hurt, he had some arm. So here is Laurie. Well, if you're just tuning in at one time, it was a pretty good ball game. We were trailing 3-2 going to the bottom of the sixth inning. But then some walks started. Is that center right field, J.D.? So Brett now one for three. So here's Jimmy Rollins 0 for 3. Fouled out to Kinsler and a couple of strikeouts. Chris Sale tomorrow. Don't want to miss that one. 308 Central Time. And that game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Shift on for Jimmy. Three and one. Back and aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. <laughs> Payoff pitch. Ball four. <laughs> Top of the ninth in Cleveland, six one Indians. Well, that's the final, six one. Cleveland beats Kansas City. Jerry Sands in the on deck circle. He will pinch hit for Avila, assuming that there's no double play. Obvious one for three with an RBI. Bottom of the seventh in St. Louis, 2 1 San Francisco. Dodgers scored one in the top of the first. Chavez Ravine. Cubs shut out the D backs. 6 0. Guns over. Two down. That'll bring up Jerry Sands. The Vila was one for three with a double. Yeah. 
Houston thumping Oakland 12 nothing down in Texas. That's after six. So a lot of the remaining 31,184 come to their feet looking for the W. I think it's some fireworks here after the game. So we saw some fireworks in the game. 10 runs, 14 hits, and there'll be some after the game. Evens at one. That ball into left center field, and nobody's going to get it. It's going to fall. So Collins will score. And it's a 10 3 on the base hit by Sands. And here's Adam Eaton, who's 0 for 3 with a base on balls. out of play. And the numbers on Carlos Rodon are not going to look that good in the paper tomorrow, but he actually did not pitch that poorly. Threw a lot of pitches though. Gave him four runs, should have been three. One of them was a gift. Yeah, he should have been credited with a quality start. Exactly. Didn't work out that way. No. All right. This ball game is over. So again, well, we got three left-handers. First one is down with yep. Rodon. Once again, the bullpen. If we used six of them the day before yesterday in New York, Bob decided just to rest them. Yeah, this was one where not much was going on late. Unfortunately, all Detroit. So under Chris Sale and his capable hands, we will go back at it tomorrow. All right. So, for my partner Steve Stone, our Hall of Fame director Jim Angie, our producer John Walgren, our associate producer Dave Ross, also the technical manager Mark Harper, and for Emmy Award winning stage manager Jeff Morell, for Mark Stacy, for Dan Lavelle, Aaron Carr, Warren Wilson, 